Um, yep. So we worked on a diagnosis tool uh, with Lindsay for the IPFS stack. Um, so the IPFS stack is quite new uh, and quite complex. So it looks like magic sometimes, right? And when something breaks, it's not really obvious how do you fix it. Um, when you come from Web2, you're used to have a lot of tools to debug things like ping, DNS checkers, trace route, a lot of tooling, and we don't have all of these tools in Web3 yet. So the team gets the same question over and over again, like, it works on my machine, it doesn't work on this machine. It's fast on my desktop, it's slow on my laptop, why? Uh, so we end up answering this question again and again, and, um, and the team also created a lot of tools for diagnosis. So for example, Adin created an IPFS check tool that lets you fix issues of why you cannot find data on IPFS, but you might not know that this tool exists. So our goal with our PL Diagnose, with Lindsay, was to create a one-stop shop uh, to figure out to fix issues uh, with the IPFS and the PL stack. So one task, um, can you go to the next slide, please, Carl? So one task was to list all the tools we could find on a single page so that you know where to look for when you have an error. So, and also when you create a new tool, you know where you should share it. So that's the, the tool page, uh, you see the screenshot at the bottom left. Um, the other task was to recreate the IPFS check in a way that is easier to, that makes it easier to explain what is happening when you have an issue and also make it easier to throw more feature at it. Um, so what we did is we took the backend from IPFS check uh, that Adin developed and we, um, and we ex extracted different steps. So when you have an issue like, hey, I cannot access my data on IPFS, why? Uh, we give you this tool where you have four steps, where you test the four steps um, that could break when you try to access data on IPFS. So step one, is my content advertised on the DHT? So we check this step then is the peer providing uh, the content present on the DHT? You have one small tool that check this step two. Then is the peer reachable from other peers, which is like the most common issues with NAT traversal, et cetera, right? And then last step is the peer selling the content. So if any of these steps break, you can see like the first two one at the top, they're green. And one of them, the third one uh, went yellow. So when there's one of these steps that breaks, uh, for retrieving content. We give you like tips on how to fix the error um, and you get some feedbacks and advices. So on the backend part, uh, it was quite interesting to, to quite, quite interesting, sorry, to dig into the stack because IPFS is like a puzzle uh, and looking at Adin's code was very interesting because um, I figured out like you can take pieces of IPFS, like pieces of libraries and build like a very small ephemeral, ephemeral IPFS nodes. So it's a very uh, smart way to pop up a very tiny node for a diagnosis tool. And lib 2 p has a very fancy um, connection getters mechanism that will like, let us, we discover new features that were interesting, basically. Um, Lindsay, do you want to go over the, over the front end part? So yeah, I think one big thing too is that it's hard to understand what some of these concepts are. Me and me and uh, Laurent was very patient. He kind of sat with me and, and uh, explained the difference between like a multi-address that has your uh, location and one that doesn't. Um, and, and going through that learning process for the first time, I think was really valuable to create a tool for people who are also using it for the first time. Um, from experience, the experience I've had in test automation, we had one tool that, that people used to diagnose and figure out what was going wrong. And it was the most popular page visited. So I see a ton of value in something like that. Um, and I think it'd be really cool to create one place that has, uh, as, as, as Laurent kind of created a little area, like where are other tools? It'd be really cool to have one place to identify what the problems are. And I, and do it in language that expresses what I'm trying to do and not necessarily language that is part of the, I'm already part of PLN and I know this vocabulary. Um, so we, he, he also taught me how to create a react component. Um, so it was really fun playing around with, uh, creating these React components, making them better, um, and, and serving it up on, on Fleek. One killer feature that I think like we figured this out and I think it's a killer feature on this is that seeing the green results, like the green, the, sorry, the yellow screenshot, 
So you tried something and you get an error. And so the error is like, I cannot access some data, IP address not valid or something like that. So we give you tips on how to fix it. And we also give you a link to your GitHub, create a GitHub issues, which means that as a user, if you're like looking at the doc that we wrote for you and your you cannot solve your problem, you can just click on this and it'll create an issue in our repo with all the details, like what we showed you and the URL and the parameters that you tried, which means that we can then answer your question and fix the tool and we never uh, answer the same question twice, hopefully. So yeah, that's, I really like this feature. It's really simple, right? It's just a, a link, but I think it makes a very useful tool.